Now let's summarize what we've covered in the past several videos, and we've actually covered quite a bit of territory, and we started by discussing how for loops could be nested within each other, and here's an example where we have one for loop within another where the inner for loop has a loop variable j, the outer for loop has a loop variable i, and for each iteration of the outer loop, the inner loop will run through its complete cycle of values. And in this particular case, we have that the header for the inner loop actually depends on the outer loop loop variable. And this will create a triangle of digits. Then we also said that lists are containers. They can contain any object. And since lists are objects, we can have a list as an element of a list or a list of lists. And here's an example where we have a list that has an integer value, a list of integer values, then a string, and then a list of strings. We then went on to discuss simultaneous assignment in the header of a for loop. And as part of that, we discussed the enumerate function that pairs a count with an item from an iterable. And here's an example where we use simultaneous assignment to assign the two items that enumerate returns in the form of a tuple to the identifiers count and x. Then in the body of the for loop, we simply print out the count and the item x that came from x list. We also describe the zip function in that pairs items from two or more iterables. And here's an example where we have the identifiers x and y simultaneously assigned the two values that zip would pair as a tuple that come from x list and y list. Then in the body of this for loop, we just print those two elements or items from the iterables. Then we also mentioned that sequences are a special type of iterable. They support indexing, and strings, lists, and tuples are all sequences. We discussed the use of negative indices, and they start from the end of a sequence where the last element has an index of minus 1, and then moving progressively to the front of the sequence, the elements get more and more negative until ultimately the first element has a negative index of minus the length of the sequence, minus 1. We discussed slices, and those specify a subset of a sequence. And we can have a slice where we give two integer values. So we have the sequence followed in square brackets, a start value, colon, and a stop value. So we start at the start and then go up to, but do not include the stop value. And we can use either positive or negative indexing for the start and stop values. Or we could have a three integer form where we have a start, a stop, and an increment value. And again, these are all separated by colons. If the increment is negative, that reverses the sense of the default start and stop values. Usually the default start value is the beginning of the sequence. The default stop value gets us up to and includes the last element of the sequence. If the increment's negative, then we actually start at the end and then go to the first element of the sequence. We also mentioned that slices can be used as L values. They can appear on the left side of an assignment operation. Finally, we talked about list comprehensions. And they provide a convenient way to construct new lists using a for loop. And the template for a list comprehension is shown here. We provide square brackets. And then the first thing we give is an expression, then what looks like the header of a for loop. So for loop variable in some iterable. And in very broad brush form, that about wraps up what we talked about in this set of videos.